Hey everybody, Hanku here with my review for Mahotsuka and Ayome or the Ancient Magus' Bride, episode 10. Uh, this one, I've got nearly a full page of notes just from this one episode. A lot happened. We got just a ton of content. And it was probably my favorite episode. I feel like episode 4 was the one I cried at, I think. Uh, with the, uh, with the dragon. Was he Nevin or something like that? Um, that, that episode was really, really good. It got us to care about a character in just one episode, less than an episode, so much that I cried about it. Uh, but I don't know, this is one of my favorite ones. And I said that, I think, about, what, two episodes ago, episode eight, I said that I really, really loved it. Um, and I did, but this was really great, too. Either way, let's discuss it. So, um, we start off with this little teaser sequence of, uh... A creature fighting wolves in the snowstorm and it looks like it's a uh, mini Elias so uh, moving along from there we see uh, we get a message th well we got the message sort of at the end of last episode that Lindell wants to see Chise and the reason why now we learn is to make a wand so that she can make a wand also he says that she could come alone and calls her his granddaughter so uh, I love that little family dynamic uh, but the dragon she was playing with as a kid grew up quick, and now she can fly on it, and it's her little dragon mount thing, so Chise just gets a really cool magical life. Um, Silky packs her a lunch so sweet. I want a Silky. Your boy needs a Silky in his life. Um, the music, I think, was really nice when they're, like, flying through the air and stuff, and we have that whole sequence. That was really, really good, and I really like the music they used with it. Silky is adorable. I'm probably going to say that multiple times throughout this uh, episode. Or review for it. Um, Selkie was so freaking cute. Uh, or at least the Selkie. It's a Selkie. I don't know if it has a proper name, but whatever. I'm just going to call it the Selkie or Selkie. Uh, but it was so cute. We learn a bit more about Lindell. We learn that he was a nameless nomad. Uh, he tells her, <laughs> he tells Chise, gotta cut the wand yourself. Throws her a saw. Um, and then I laughed so much just because of the absurdity of it and the way it looked and all. But the bird lands on uh, Elias's windowsill and then starts talking to him. Says it's Adolf Stroud from the College Association or something like that. And he wants to talk about Chise. Uh, but I thought that was so funny. Just the bird talking to him. Um, so uh, we learned that Lindell is a healer. Says that he's worried about Elias controlling Chise and her being okay with that. And again, I love that for her character. It's like what I said about Angelica last week, where I was like, she was worried about Chise and said, you know, I just want to make sure this is what's right for you. You need to think about yourself a little bit more. And I like that Lindell was that way as well, where he's like, you know, Elias, he, he kind of wants to use you, and you kind of want to let him, and I think maybe you should have a better relationship than that. Um, so I loved that, and we then get a backstory. And the backstory was the bulk of the episode, and it was absolutely great. So uh, he says, and it's great to learn more about this world, but I felt like we learned so much more about this world, and so much of it was kept completely mysterious. And I think that makes it great, because one thing I've praised about this uh, series is that a lot of times with stuff about magic and whatnot, and uh, even stuff that isn't about magic, the world gets hyper-explained. So explained that there's no mystery or deviance anymore without breaking up what you've already explained. Um, and magic can be that way too. It can be so over-explained that you know everything about it. But with this, magic is still super mysterious. The world's still super mysterious. Um, and I think that's all very, very great for the series. But uh, he says that mages were aware that they could see mystical creatures and weren't the same as normal humans because of that. Uh, way before even humans started using earth and oil to uh, use as fuel and stuff. So uh, he says that some mages live long lives and they don't even know why. Some tried to figure out how or why if there was some purpose, but uh, many died searching for that purpose. Again, I really like that and he sort of, it, it's implied that he himself was a wanderer because he lived so long and he wanted to find that sort of purpose. But uh, he finds Elias collapsing from hunger on the night we saw of uh, Elias fighting off those wolves and all. But uh, he finds him collapsing from hunger, carried him back to his camp and fed him. And uh, Elias says that he only remembers walking and avoiding humans, just trying to get somewhere. 
So uh, Lindell says, okay, I'm going to take you to find my master. Maybe she'll know what you are, because I have no clue what you are, even. Um, then he shows him some magic. He, tri <laughs> he tricks him into drinking seawater. That was funny. Uh, and we meet Master Rahab, who is, or Rahab, who is the um, master of Lindell. So the grandmother of Elias, then. Great-grandmother of Chise. So, uh... Rahab says, well, I can't tell what you are. You seem to be a fairy or spirit, but you have a trace of human in there. I'd be able to tell if you were a human that got turned into a fairy or spirit, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So, again, the mystery of what he is. He's not quite spirit or fairy. He's not quite human. Um, there's bits and pieces of traces of that in there. Uh, and he doesn't seem to be a human that became a spirit or fairy. So again, the mystery. Very, very good. We get an explanation. We get some information that keeps us satisfied as viewers without giving us too much to where it's not interesting anymore. It's not mysterious anymore. Um, she asks what else he remembers, and he says, red. <laughs> so he remembers red. Perhaps that's blood or something. Perhaps some very sad backstory happened to him, and uh, that caused him to... Uh, morph into whatever creature this is upon death or something like that. Who knows? Um, so, uh, then she tells Lindell to raise Elias until he's, in, er, until he's independent, and uh, even says to make him his apprentice. Lindell says he doesn't do apprentices, though, but they're acquaintances now, and he's got to take care of an acquaintance. So, uh, Rehab then gives Elias his name because she has a thing for naming people. Uh, Renfred comes over back in the present time. Renfred comes over the uh, the bird and is talking over his friend through the bird. Uh, well, not his friend, but Adolf. Renfred's talking over Adolf Stroud through the bird, um, and uh, he says that uh, Elias will ruin Chise if he if all he does is let her live with him. So uh, I think that sort of means that they want to uh, make sure that he's letting her not only be independent, but that he's properly teaching her so that she can be independent and live on her own and not just be pretty much a slave to him. So again, I like that. And I think Elias, I, I think he's a good guy. I think even though they say he doesn't really properly have emotions and stuff, I still think he has some sort of semblance of morality there where I feel like he cares more about Chise than that. Um, more than just some piece of property, you know. But um, I don't, I don't know how to quite articulate this. Uh, I feel like he cares more about Chise than that. But also, it is a good thing that they have people holding him accountable, so they so that he doesn't just treat her like that. Um, but either way, I love the episode. I thought it was a great backstory, and the backstory is good for the character because it really allows me to sympathize with Elias a lot more. Where before this, Elias was a little bit hard to connect with as a character. He seemed very inhuman with... We got these glimpses of human-ish things that happened with him. But with this episode, it really brought out that human side and um, sort of gave fans more to connect with, I think. Uh, it also gave great importance to Lindell as a character, which I thought was great. Selkie was adorable. I hope we keep getting to see more of Selkie. Uh, Rahab was great too. I hope we see her more. I hope we see her in the present time. Hopefully she's still alive and all. Uh, also, was kind of cute. <laughs> um, uh, also, one of the best and biggest things about this, especially in the first half of the episode, is I absolutely love seeing Chise be independent, go off on adventures kind of on her own and do her own thing, uh, progress her own storyline without Elias having to be there to protect her all the time. So uh, I like seeing Chise do her own thing. Also, it kind of shows the trust. Elias has been hiding in her shadow wherever she went, pretty much. But it shows the trust he has that he's allowed her to go off with Lindell. Whether it's the trust in her, the trust in Lindell. Um, I like that he did this. Uh, then, uh, yeah, lots, and de lots of depth and mystery to the world itself, too. And I like that we explained a lot and gave fans a lot to talk about and discuss while still keeping that mystery unscathed. So, uh... As a score, I don't think it was quite emotional enough to warrant a perfect score, but it was so entertaining and had such a good story that I feel like uh, it's worth giving very, very close to perfect. I'm giving it 9.75 uh, sulkies out of 10. <laughs> I don't know, 9.75 out of 10. Hope you enjoy Mini Elias's, uh, Elias's, either way.
that's it. Like if you did like the video, comment down there to tell me what you thought of this week's episode, what you thought of my thoughts on it. Subscribe for more um, Motsuka no Yome, much more on the channel. Uh, follow on Twitter if you want, I'll try to keep you updated there and stuff for the channel. And if you want to link to our Discord server to talk with us there, uh, me and others from the channel. <laughs> uh, but if you want a link to the Discord server, just ask and I'll give you, or ask for a link and I'll give you one. That's it. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all next time.